rest on your feet as we go to the word of the Lord. Glory. Glory. Go to the book of 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians. We're going to chapter number 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2. Are we live, Sister Sylvia? Yes. All right. Give me just a moment. Let me tag the saints that will be watching from my page. And we're going to go into the word of the Lord. Is that all right? Anybody in here love Jesus this morning? Amen. 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 Anybody grateful that he is your God? Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Are we on pastor's page or on the river? Okay. All right. Amen. I'm honored to be here at the River of Life Church. I'm honored to be here this morning. Amen. Um, standing in the stead of my brother as he is in recovery. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. I said he's in recovery. Amen. So we give God praise. Amen. Thank you, Father. First Thessalonians chapter number two. I don't want to read a whole lot. I'll just read a few verses. Verse 17 says, But brothers and sisters, when we were orphaned by being separated from you for a short time, in person but not in thought, out of our intense longing we made every effort to see you. For we wanted to come to you. Certainly, I, Paul, did again and again. But Satan blocked our way. It says, but Satan blocked our way. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Um, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of times, a lot of times, we come to church and we look for a word that speaks to our right now moments. We need something or we look for something that inspires us, that empowers us for where we are right now. But over the years, as I've grown up a little bit and gotten a little bit older, so to speak, I've come to realize that there's a saying that says an ounce of prevention is better than a ton of cure. Sometimes there are things that, and, and, and what the enemy likes to do is keep us in a tizzy over the right now so we don't focus on what is to come. Are y'all with me this Amen. And so I submit to you today, ladies and gentlemen, that the body of Christ is under a major attack. Come on. And in particular, this church is under attack. I recognize very specifically that there are those who are watching me by means of social media. So this message applies to the body of Christ as well as those out there, as well as those who are sitting right in here. And for those of you that are in here, I need to know, do I have a talk back church? Amen. Oh, Amen. All right. Okay. I want to tell you a little story. <coughs> Just walk with me for a minute. There was a remote village. And in this remote village, they would, one of the ways that they would uh, assert male dominance and who was going to have power in this village is that they would have a wrestling match. Mm. And with this wrestling match, ladies and gentlemen, what they would do is they would get in the center of the village and they would have some stones and they would make a big circle around in the center of the village. And they'd have the stones. 
And the two contenders would get in the middle of the stones. And this particular night, two contenders were there. And they seemed almost evenly matched. One looked a little smaller than the other. But they were ready to fight. And so in this match, ladies and gentlemen, there were three ways that you could get defeated. One, you could be pinned. Two, you would submit or surrender, or as we say in today's terminology, tap out. Or three, you would step outside the boundaries of the circle. If you were pushed outside of the boundaries of the circle, you could lose your match. Now they had multiple fights in this, in this one match, they would have multiple fights. You know, and kind of how we have best two out of three. That's how they had it. And so a sound was made by one of the elders of the village, and he banged, and the wrestlers went to fighting. They started wrestling. I'm not talking about the WWE, the stage. I'm talking about they were really going at it. Ladies and gentlemen, as they were going at it, it seemed as if neither opponent was going to win. Interesting thing was, you could tell when opponent number one was getting weakened because he would start to kind of, you know, buckle. But one of the reasons why he was buckling was because opponent number two got in his head. Hmm. All right, now. I feel like preaching this morning. Work it, work it, work it, sir. Opponent number two, when they first got ready to start the match, opponent number two stood and squared himself off against opponent number one. Hmm. Looked him in his eyes and told him, you could never defeat me. Hmm. Opponent number one, trying to hold on to everything he had, said, no, I'm going to fight. I'm going to win. I'm going to do. And so he did. He, he got me fought. And then somewhere in the middle of the fight, opponent number two said, see, I told you. You can't beat me. Who do you think you are? And that was the moment when opponent number one began to weaken. Woo. But then, ladies and gentlemen, for those of y'all that aren't used to me, I do raise my voice every now and then, so just beware. <laughs> but then, ladies and gentlemen, in this fight, even though opponent number one seemed to get beaten down a little bit, but he would always make his comeback. Finally, opponent number two got frustrated because he was grappling with opponent number one, and his grappling with opponent number one, he couldn't get him down to pin him. And he couldn't get him to submit. So, he came up with an idea. Instead of coming at him head on, what he did was he did a he backed up a little bit and turned sideways. Seemed like it wouldn't make sense for him to do all that. I mean, after all, you're in a wrestling match, right? And what he would do is in his attempt to win this match, he would shoulder and his elbow to slowly nudge his opponent toward the edge of the ring. He knew he couldn't get him to tap out. Knew he wasn't going to be able to pin him. His only other option was to push him out of the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, the text that we look at here in 1 Thessalonians is a very interesting text because Paul says, I desire to come to you. He's talking to the Thessalonican church. He's talking to the Thessalonican people. And he wants to come and visit with them and minister to them and love on them and encourage them and empower them. But he says, but something happened. I was prevented from coming. How 
was I prevented? It says, Satan hindered us. Oh, I knew it right there. He said, but Satan hindered us. Now, let me talk to you for a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead. The word that he uses there for hindered is the Greek word ekatos. Ekatos. And this word ekatos, number one, gives the implication of a road that has been washed out or a road that has been in, that is now impassable. Have you ever been going in a pathway that you thought was God and you thought God was directing you and it seemed like you ran into nothing but roadblocks? Seems like no matter what you try and what you endeavor to do, it seems like you keep running into roadblocks. Am I talking to anybody in here right now that in your life you're doing the best you can but you feel like you keep running into It would be different if they were just natural roadblocks but what we're talking about and what Paul was speaking of were roadblocks that were set up by the enemy. Because on the other side is something great. On the other side is a blessing. On the other side is something awesome. But because the devil knows it, he's determined to keep you behind the roadblock. Hmm. Told you the church is under attack. Because every time you turn around, you keep dealing Thank y'all for helping me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, dealing with roadblocks. But as I begin to study even further, that word, a coctos, bears another meaning. The other meaning of this word, a coctos, it implies an athletic events. In this athletic event, it implies that a runner will be running real well. Yes. Doing real good. Yes. A fighter will be doing real good. Yes. And all of a sudden, one of his opponents will run up beside him and begin to nudge him with his elbow aggressively out of his lane. Right now. Right now. Begin to nudge him. Let's use our, uh, our parable earlier. Begin to nudge him towards the edge of the circle, trying to hinder him from what is his destiny and what is his purpose. So it keeps. And I feel it in the atmosphere right now that sitting in this room, there are some people that have been feeling the nudging of the enemy pushing you. You didn't know what was going on, but it was the devil pushing you. Trying to get you knocked out of the fight. The enemy has been Don't turn to the left or the right, not another time. 
That was the assignment that God gave me to give in the word he gave me to give to that pastor. Now, y'all know that wasn't easy to have to walk up to a pastor and tell them that. <laughs> then the question was asked of me, well, what do you do when you walk in your church and you're looking at three people sitting on the pews? Talk, sir, talk. What do you do when you walk in your church and, and, and you, you're, looking, you're looking for growth you want, and you walk in and there's three people there? Work it, sir, work it. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me in that moment. And then the person went on to say, and do you not know, the pastor went on to say, do you not know, man of God, that there are people who have called and said they want to come to our church? But it seems like they never, they, they never can get through the door. Work it, sir. Work it. Woo! Help me, Holy Ghost. Make it plain. Make it plain. Pastor told me, said, I've got people that have called and said, we would love to be a part of your church. But it seems like they never come through the door. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me in that moment. And he said, son, I need you to tell that pastor, don't you know that there are spirits that are on assignment that are come to hinder the work of God? And those spirits can stand in the way and become roadblocks to those people who really want to be there, but they are hindering them from getting there. Here is the indictment against the church is that we have not been praying the way we should. I'm talking here and I'm talking in the body of Christ. We have not been praying the way we should because we have not been addressing hindering spirits. Woo, God help me here. Hindering spirits. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me let me let me let me talk for just a second here. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand the Bible talks about in Psalm 103. Uh, uh, is that the one I want? Psalm 103, Psalm 104. It talks about how these angels, Psalm 104, verse 4, tells us that the angels are ministering spirits who are as a flame of fire. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hebrews 1 7 tells us that they're sent to us who are the heirs of salvation. Oh Psalm 103 tells us that these angels excel in strength. They're mighty in power. And they hearken to his voice. Are y'all with me this morning? Come on. They hearken to the voice of God. They're strong, they're mighty, and they're ready to do battle on your behalf. We got one problem though. What is that? Come on. Work it. The problem is, ladies and gentlemen, that in time or eternity past, no, that seems like an oxymoron, but y'all get me. In eternity past, somewhere in there, Lucifer decided that he was going to buck up against God. He thought he was going to be the one that he thought he was going to be the great thing up there. He thought he was going to be awesome. And so he thought more of himself than what he was. And he convinced one third of the angels to follow him. Are y'all with me? And so when it was time for Lucifer to get kicked out of heaven, he didn't get kicked out by himself. Lucifer got kicked out when that third that decided they were going to follow him. Well, ladies and gentlemen, where did they get kicked to? They got kicked down here to earth. And they, now let me help you right here. They did not lose their ability and their knowledge just because they were kicked out of heaven. What they knew up there, they still had the training. They still had what they knew. So now they bring that down to the earth and use that against everything that God is and everything that God does. They are placed in their mind that they have, they are going to do everything to stop what God wants to do. They're doing everything in their power to stop what God wants to do. They're doing everything in their power to stop what God wants to do in your life. They're doing everything in their power to stop what God wants to do in this church. They're doing everything in their power to stop what God wants to do in the body of Christ. So what are you saying, Lord? I'm trying to tell you that those angels that are fallen now are against you. They are fighting you, and they have become hindering spirits. Thank you, Jesus. Hindering spirits. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they have 
on that. Woo, God have mercy. Do you not understand that what the enemy will do? And I was thinking about this church, and I heard the Holy Ghost speak to me about this church. And this is going to get a little rough right here, so put your seatbelts on. <laughs> too many people in this church are too easily moved. All right, now. Work it, sir. Work it. Mm. If it rains too hard, you don't want to show up to church. Oh, my God. I have not talked to pastors about this church. Not in that respect. If you get offended, you don't show up. Because you don't like what so-and-so did to you. I mean, it's, it's bad when it's one of your brothers or your sisters that you get upset with and you don't show up to church because you're mad with one of them. But Lord God, don't let it be one of your pastors. Hello, somebody. We get offended by stuff too easily. And don't realize that the hindering spirit has partnered up with the spirit of offense and the spirit of unforgiveness and said, we're going to work together on this job right here. But if we can keep them in unforgiveness, if we can keep them walking around here holding offense in their heart, then we can keep the church from growing. But can I walk deeper? See, because some of y'all came in here looking for a blessing sermon. I'm not giving you a blessing sermon. Not the way you want it. I'm going to give you a blessing sermon for the way your life needs to be. And the blessing sermon is, you got to you can walk around with a this in your heart. You are endangering not only the church, but you are endangering this church. No, ye not. I'll preach long. I'll preach. I think I will. No, ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are putting that
Y'all might not want me to come back after this. But churches don't grow on inconsistent people. And if you are one of those people, please, I'm not apologizing for what I just said. You just say, God, please forgive me and do better. You don't grow being inconsistent. Am I making sense to anybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't grow being inconsistent. Yeah, yeah. And watch this. The enemy will have the hindering spirits join forces with other spirits to create what we call distractions. Can I can I tell y'all what the Holy Ghost said to me? And y'all get y'all can get mad, I don't care. <laughs> I, I've gotten to that place now, I don't care anymore. If the Lord said it, I'm going to say it. Listen, let me tell you something. The Lord said, many of you have not been on the wall covering your leaders the way you should. You've not been praying consistently for the leadership of this house. You've not been praying consistently for the leaders in the body of Christ. And they come under attack when they are taking, uh, they're taking hits that they really shouldn't have to take. Because some of you should have been on the wall praying and covering the work. Wait a minute, let me show you. Last time I was here, Sister Sylvia, Pastor Sylvia, I preached about Nehemiah. And I preached about staying on the wall. And the interesting thing is, here I am again, and Nehemiah comes up again, and there are people this time, I'm not just talking about Nehemiah, but I was talking to Pastor that day about the Nehemiah spirit and building the wall. But ladies and gentlemen, I need you to understand, now I'm talking to the people who are supposed to help him build the wall. The Bible said that there were people who had swords in their hand and they had plowshares. There has to be somebody who will be able to stand with their sword in their hand while the work is getting done. Somebody has not been praying. I said it. I said you haven't been praying. You have not consistent. Oh, I know what you've been praying about. You've been praying about family matters. You've been praying about other stuff. You've been praying for God to bless you. Those are such immature levels of prayer. And I'm not saying don't pray for your family. Don't misunderstand. But anybody that's watching, don't misunderstand. I'm not telling you not to pray for your family. I'm not telling you that you can't believe God for finances. That's not what I'm saying. But when that becomes the focal point, because the enemy has got you so focused in your life on the disparities and the things that you don't have right now, or the things that are struggling, he can keep you looking over here when the real battle is over here. Are y'all hearing me today? Can anybody in here recognize that that's exactly what the enemy's been doing to you? Tell, tell the truth. You've been looking over here only to find out the real battle is over here. And by the time you look back and discover that the real battle is over here, the walls are crumbled, the, the, the gates have come down, and, and everything is falling apart over here. And you're wondering, how did it get that way? It's because you were focused over here, trying to put fighters out over here. The Lord says, I need you back on the wall. I need you praying. I need you interceding. I need you crying out. I need you going after me. Watch this. Because only in going after God will you figure out what's priority. Well, 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 well. Only when you can hear his voice will you figure out what is supposed to be priority. My son this week went through a battle. And I sat there and I looked and for a moment it started to disturb me. And I said, oh no. I know what this is. You're a hindering spirit. Trying to keep me from focusing on what I need to focus on. So I spoke up. I said, I know what I've declared over my child. I can't hear anybody. I said, I know what I've said over my child. And the God that I serve. Come on. Is 
faithful over his word to perform it. I've declared his word over my child. And because I've declared his word over my child, there is no weapon I've got that's formed against him. That will prosper. I don't care what you throw at him, devil. My son can't lose because I stand in the name of the Lord. My son can't die because I stand in the name of the Lord. My son can't quit because I stand in the name of the Lord. And I still believe that there is power in the blood. There's power in that thing. And so I'm not worried about what they call. I'm not worried about what they do. I just know my son has the victory because I have declared it in the name of Jesus. Play! 
place where there is revelation, there can be victory. There can be no victory where there is no revelation. You ought to praise God. Uh-oh, I feel a holler coming on. God, open up my eyes. I need to see God.
you believed the wrong report. Whoever you are, the Lord said you believed and accepted the wrong report. Report might have said foreclosure. But God said not so. Report might have said bankruptcy. But God said I'm going to cause you to bounce back from your bankruptcy. Report said divorce. It might already be in the divorce court. But in the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare that somebody in here is making a bounce back. I'm going to get out of your way. I want you to notice something. Galatians 5, 7. He talk, Paul talks to the Galatian church. He said you were running well. Yeah. Mm. Watch this. It didn't say what. It says who. That's right. Y'all missing. Come on. Remember I told you that one of the things attached to, one of the meetings attached to a Koptos is it's an athletic event and you're running and that person in the other lane is doing this to push you out, to get you disqualified. Paul asked the question of the Galatians, you were running well, who did hinder you? Who? 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 You know what I tend to believe? I tend to believe it was the same who that was up against Paul in 1 Thessalonians 2.18. Y'all yeah. Yeah. not talking. Come on. I said, I, I tend to believe it was the same who that was against Paul in 1 Thessalonians 2.18. The same one. And Satan did hinder. Yeah. 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 Come on. Come on. In this room, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you, Jesus. my assignment today is to deal with these hindering spirits mm -hmm. that have come in this room and to those who've been watching. You know, the scriptures say a very powerful statement. It says, little foxes spoil the vine. Sometimes the enemy's been creeping in unaware spoiling your vine. Amen. You wonder why you can't be fruitful? Because mm -hmm. the enemy is creeping in with hindering spirits, oh spoiling your vine. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Am I talking to anybody in here today? Yeah. Can, can you be honest yeah. with yourself yes. and acknowledge I have some stuff that has been hindering me? Yes. Yes. I have not given 100, I don't care how deep you say you are. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I'm not giving 100% to the things of God like I should. I've not been faithful in what I'm supposed to do even in the house of God like I should. Can we really be honest? Come on. Work it, sir. Work it. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe it's Daniel around seven, somewhere in there, where it says the enemy was given power to wear out the saints. He would come, and he'd do everything he could to wear out the saints. Some of you sitting in here right now, you got a smile on your face. You got your church mask on. Because you don't want anybody to know what you're really going through. But the reality is, you're worn out. If we had some kind of microscope that gave us the power to look into your spirit, we would find out that you're really worn out. That's what it is. Thank you. Worn out. I'm looking in this room. I see people that are worn out. But part of the reason why, ooh. Preach. Mm. Go ahead. Work it, sir. Work. Part of the reason why you're
you're worn out is because you haven't learned how to resist. Mm. See, because when you do resistance training, even in the natural, when you do resistance training, it builds up your stamina. When you got to run for a long time, it builds up your stamina. Most of us don't have any spiritual stamina. I can't hear nobody. Y'all not talking back at me now. Most of us don't have spiritual stamina. We don't know what it means to press until it's time until we see the breakthrough. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. The Bible. Some of you don't understand that some of the smaller things that you've been going through are really developing you for the big thing that you're facing now. And as you're facing this big thing, don't forget the Lord Jesus. He says, don't forget the lessons you learned from the small stuff. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Now that you're facing this big thing, don't forget the lessons you learned from the small stuff. Because now, when you get up against the big thing, you're going to have to learn how to press. Press until you can push it. I remember going to the gym one day, Sister Sylvia. Sister Sylvia, I went to the gym and I went to do the leg press. And we put a whole bunch. Now, there was, I put one plate on each side, one 45 plate on each side, and I pushed. That was no problem. My legs are pretty strong. At least I thought. <laughs> we put two on each side. I pushed. No big deal. Dear heart, we put three on there. I pushed. No big deal. We got the four. <laughs> well, I was only, watch this, I was only able to put, now all the other times, everything else, I pushed five or ten times in a set. But when we got to those four on each side, my first time around, I was only able to push one time. Y'all will catch me in a minute. Go ahead. I was only able to push it one time. When I got that thing up, full extension, when it was coming back down, I was praying, Lord, help me. <laughs> Basically, yeah. there were bars there to stop it from coming all the way down. It would come all the way down. Amen. <laughs> come on. Thank you, Jesus. For those who don't know what the leg press is, that's when you're laying at an angle like this and your legs are up and you're pushing up against something. Right, right. Well, over time, I kept doing it. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Over time, I kept working my way up. Okay. One place, two place, three place. Four plates. When I got to the four plates this time, I could push it two times. Okay. When I got to the four plates the next time, or a few times later, I could push it three times. Now I can push four plates on each side with no problem. Because I learned how to resist. And I used the small things that I learned from in the beginning to help get me to the big thing I was facing right now. I'm trying to tell somebody in here, you got to learn that what you're up against right now is building you, is developing you, is strengthening you for the battle. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I got to go. Yes. Woo. Jesus. You understand? Yeah. What's happening? God is literally trying to build you. You're up against some stuff right now that looks impossible. Good. Stop complaining about it. Thank you, Jesus. Stop letting yourself get down about it. Stand up and say, you know what? This is not going to beat me. Watch this. I'm done after this. I got two more things to tell you, and I'm done. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Lord. So, question comes now. You said, man of God, you've been telling me about these hindering spirits. You've been telling me how they work in the darkness, in the places where I don't have revelation. You've been telling me how they work stealthily in my life, pulling me away in different capacities. Let me say something to this church, and then I'm going to get back to the body of Christ as a whole. Church, 
Your pastors need you. Y'all quiet. That's true. Can I be quiet? I'm going to say it again. I'm, I'm stepping down, Cecilia. I said, your pastors need you. It's going to get rough right here. Hold on. If you feel unwanted, and I'm not saying that they feel this, but I'm just saying, let's talk for a minute. Okay, let me do it like this. If, if they were the pastors that walked in the door and there were three people here, if it was them, and they got to start a service by themselves, the three people here, how do you feel? If they feel unwanted, unneeded, or if you are a member that gives them problems all the time. Now, I don't give them a problem. I just, speak, I just speak my mind from time to time. Sometimes you learn to be quiet. I don't care if you don't like it. It's the truth. Just because you have an opinion doesn't make you right. And let me help somebody else. Just because you have an opinion doesn't mean God called you to the office that they walk in. See, they walk from a different vantage point than you walk from. See, uh, yes, Lord, I'm going to say it. Part of the problem is y'all want your pastors to be your friends. See, that's, that's this new church culture. We want pastors that are yeah. friends to us. Yeah. That's it. That's Let me help you. They are not assigned to be your friend. They are assigned to be your leader. Because if they try to be your friend, when they get ready to rebuke you, you're not going to take it. That's, right. that's why people leave churches, because they don't like taking rebuke. Now, it's different when you have pastors that are abusive. Yeah. 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 Come on. Now, there are pastors in the body of Christ that are abusive, and they abuse their power. Now, that is not a God. That's right. That's right. But when a leader tells you, no, that's not wise for you to do, somebody ought to wake up and say, you know what? I'm going to follow my leader. Because if they're wrong, they got to answer to God. I'm just following the leadership that God has given me. Because we don't want to fight. See, it's a, it's, a, it's a bunch of renegades in the house of God now. I said it. Facebook, I said it. There are a bunch of renegades in the house of God right now. They don't want to be led. They don't want to be pastors. All you want is a preacher. Amen. You better say it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, let me speak for him. He didn't say this. I'm saying it for him. <laughs> if I can't rebuke you, I can't pastor you. I'm sure most of you, some of you who have parents that may have spanked, believed in spankings. Anybody have parents that believe in spankings? Yeah. <laughs> and even though they believed in spankings, after they got done spanking your butt, when it was all said and done, they may have to go in their room and cool down a minute, but when it was all said and done, did you not get another hug at some point? Y'all yeah. not talking. Yeah. I said, did you not get another hug at some point? Was yeah. dinner not on the table at some point? Yeah. They still loved you. They didn't, they didn't kill you. They beat you because they wanted you to do what was right. But after you get in your spanking, they still loved you. Yeah. It's time for believers to grow up and stop being so thin-skinned just because somebody tells you you're wrong. Well, I don't think. Don't you understand that pastoral leadership walks from a different vantage point? Amen. They walk from a higher place. Yes. Not that they were, not that we're any better than you, but we walk from a different vantage point because we've been assigned to see and to lead. We gotta watch over the flock. You down there in the flock, how are we gonna watch over the flock? Amen. I can't hear nobody talk. Amen. Amen. Well, I got a better idea. Who are you? <laughs> I feel somebody ready to throw something at me. So I <laughs> and in case y'all don't know, just because I'm not hollering right now doesn't mean I'm not under the anointing. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm 
just giving you the spoonful of sugar to help the medicine go down. <laughs> Thank you. Trust me, I'm telling you the truth. But you know, and in my closing, ladies and gentlemen, I always teach my preachers at our church, don't just give people the problem without offering them a solution. Because the gospel is the good news. So to just come in here today and tell you, and that it's good that we identified what was really going on. Can we all agree that we've, we've identified something that's really been going on? Have Hendrick Spirits been in this room? Yes. Both personally and in this church? Yes. yes. Watch this. I can't just tell you, we can't just identify that there are problems. We now have to talk about what is the solution. Amen. Scripture says these words. It says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yeah. Against principalities, power, spiritual weakness, rules of darkness in high places. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Mighty through God to the pulling down of Pay attention right there. Pay attention right there. What did I say? Pulling down a strong That's right. What has set itself up in your life? What has set itself up in this church has been strong. Doesn't mean this church doesn't love the Lord. Doesn't mean that at all. It just means that the enemy has set up some roadblocks. Amen. <laughs> yeah. He set up some impasses in the road. Now watch. I told you, he strategically has done this. Your battle won't be her battle. The enemy will play on your mind in one way while he's playing on her mind in another. And then he'll hit somebody else's body in the room. Just so he can build up a stronghold. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So now you've got to learn how. See, now, 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 now. Listen. If it were just everyday, ordinary, average resistance, the Bible would not have addressed it as a stronghold. Did y'all hear me? If it was just everyday stuff, the Bible would have never addressed it as a stronghold. The fact that the Bible addressed it as a stronghold means it's a different kind of battle. See, that's why y'all quit too easy. We become too haphazard. I was sitting this morning before church, and the Lord said, the church has become too haphazard with my promises. Anytime they feel too much resistance, they tap out. Anytime it seems like it's taking longer than it should, than we put in our minds for it to happen, we do what? That's what we do. Can we be honest? Yes. Some of you started praying about some stuff at the beginning of the year, and because now it's what? April? Yeah. <laughs> and you haven't seen it? You stopped praying. You tapped out. That was the goal of the hindering spirit in the first place. Y'all want me to prove it in my closing? God, I feel the anointing. I feel the presence of the Lord right here. You want me to prove it? Yes. Go to Daniel chapter 10. You don't have to go there physically. Just, just write it down. Daniel chapter 10. Daniel, now remember what I said. Hindering spirits work in the place where there's a lack of illumination. Daniel was looking for the mysteries of God. He was trying to understand. He said, I was seeking after the Lord for understanding of a hard thing. That's what it says in Daniel 10. From even down, if you go back around 8 9, it goes up to 10. You'll find he was seeking the Lord. 
for a hard thing. He wanted to understand some things. And the Bible in chapter 10 says he was met by a man clothed in beautiful raiment, angelic. And here it is. He says to Daniel, Daniel, from the day you pray, From the very first day you prayed, yeah. your prayer was heard yeah. in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Ten chapter Daniel says, not only was your prayer heard, but your answer was released. I can take off running around this church right now. I said, from the day you prayed. From the day you prayed, yes, your prayer was heard. The lie that he told you was that your prayer has not been heard. Am I talking to anybody in this room? The lie that the devil told you was that your prayer had not been heard. But ladies and gentlemen, I come to tell somebody, if you prayed in faith, your prayer was heard. Roadblocks that have tried to hinder the growth of this church. 
tried to hinder the development of this church. Yes. I come against the roadblocks that have tried to hinder the development of this church. Yes. Touch yourself. This church. Yes. These roadblocks that keep coming try to hinder this church. And because this church is hindered, this church is hindered. And because this church is hindered, the church at large is hindered. You got to stop looking at yourself and understand you're a part of something bigger. Roadblocks are being moved now. A pastor, look at me. You cannot expect what God does in this church to look like what you had before. It's not going to be that way. The season has passed. The time has changed. You're going to have to be on your face before God for what the face of the ministry shall now look like. You're going to have to go after him. In your time of recovery, I told you this while I was there with you. In your time of recovery, this is the time for you to hear him. Amen. Pastor God says, I'm getting James's head out of the way. Ooh. Ooh. Now y'all can't do that. Y'all don't have the authority to speak to Pastor in that way. Don't, that's dishonorable. But I can stand as his brother. He's a fellow, fellow leader in the kingdom and speak to him in this capacity. Yeah. He's getting James's head out of the way. He's getting Sylvia's head out of the way. Because you're, you're not going to be able to think your way through this process. Mm. He's going to give you wisdom, but you're not going to be able to think your way through it. It will not be by the wisdom of men. I'm making write all the books they want to about how to grow and develop your church. But what God has assigned to you, you've got to work. Here's my question to you. If all you have are these that are sitting here and it never gets any bigger, what you going to do with it? Work it. Work it. Now here's the question to y'all. Are you going to be a people? That will stand with the vision. Are you going to be a people that will walk with your leaders faithfully? Are you going to be a people that if he gives you vision and you don't understand it, you just simply say, if God said it, we trust you. That's right. Amen. So be it. Pastor shouldn't have to come clean the church. Neither him or Lady Sylvia. Y'all should be getting together to make sure the church is clean. That's right. I can't hear anybody talking back to me. Y'all, somebody in here, you can turn the video off now because I'm getting ready to get real hard.